Hey Bill, it's Bill Everline. You said you wanted me to go through some of that physics uh, workshop with you. Um, basically, this is what I would do. I would tell them that if they could do this chart, it's going to help them do a lot of the problems that they're going to have, or at least help with, with uh, a good bit of those problems. And so what I would do is tell them to kind of draw, you know, start out by drawing what they know. And basically, we all know that um, we have depths and we have atmospheres. And at the surface, we're at one atmosphere. And at third, and this is salt water. At 33 feet, we're at two atmospheres. At 66, we're at three atmospheres. At 99, we're at four. And at five, it's 132. And basically, the way mathematically to get that is you take the depth plus 33 divided by 33, and that gives you atmosphere. So they have to know that. But they can write this on the chart, and then they'll have that if they ever forget how to figure out atmosphere some depth. Okay. On the other side, there were three pressures that they had to remember, and I told them to remember the word gap, G-A-P. Okay, there's two P's there. And it was gauge pressure, absolute pressure, and then the two partial pressures of oxygen and nitrogen. And the way they get to that, uh, to go from depth to gauge pressure in salt water, it was times 0.445, you know, and we know that you know zero times 0.445 is zero, and then 33 times 0.445 is 14.7, and then 66 times 0.445 is 29.4, and then these are remember 44.1 and 58.8. Okay, so that gives them their, their gauge pressure. So if they have a depth, then they can figure the gauge pressure. And there's a reason that, that I have them write it out like that. I'll show you that in a couple minutes. To go from gauge pressure to absolute, you just add 14.7. And so at the surface, it's 14.7 is your absolute pressure. 29.4, 44.1, 58 .8, And then at the at 73.5, um, which is okay. So then the last thing they have to worry about going from absolute pressure to partial pressure is times 0.2 to go to oxygen, times 0.8 to go to nitrogen. That's how we used to do it years ago. I think you guys, I hope you still do it instead of going to 21 and 79. But anyhow, that's how we did it. And 14.7 times 0.2 is 2.94 times 0.8 is 11.76. And then uh, next is... 5.88, 23.52, and again, if they forget it, they have a calculator, you know, 44.1 is uh, 8.82, and 35.28, and that's 47.04, and this is 11.76, and then 73.5.2 is 14.7, and 58.8. And the reason I have them do all that is on the test, when they're really under pressure, they're going to get questions. And one of the questions might be like, you know, I don't have your test, but let's say they say, what depth is the partial pressure of oxygen 10? Okay, now they can go right to the chart and fill it in. If they put 10 here, they know right away the answer is going to be between 66 and 99. And all they have to do is work backwards. So to go from absolute to partial of oxygen, you multiply by 0.2. Here you divide by 0.2. So 10 divided by 0.2 is 50. Okay, and then if you're going from gauge to absolute, you add 14.7. To go backwards, you subtract 14.7. So 50 minus 14.7 is 35.3. Now again, they can check it because it's got to be between these two numbers. If they accidentally had 45.3, they would see that it doesn't fall in there and they did something wrong. And then to go back to depth, instead of multiplying from depth to gauge, you multiply 0.445, they're going to divide by 0.445 and they get 79.3. And so the answer to that, at what depth is the partial pressure of oxygen 10? The answer would be 79.3. And again, they can check that in between there. And that seemed to really help them because they're under pressure to get that test done. And again, just going forward, if we said, it, you know, what, what's the partial pressure of nitrogen and salt water at a depth of 50 feet? You just put in the 50, and then you go forward 
and it's like 22.75, uh, add 14.7, you have 36.95, and then multiply by 0.8, you get 29.56, and again, you can kind of check that to make sure it's between those two numbers. Again, this is how we used to do it, and I assume it's still done. Um, and then this helps with the volume problems as well. If you remember the volume problems, um, one over the number of atmospheres gives you your volume. Okay, don't worry about it at the surface. If you have a balloon that's full at the surface, it's full at the surface. Um, and then two is one half or 0.5, three is a third or 0.3, three, four. Uh, one, uh, 0.25 and 0.2 and then you get those real weird problems and I remember the last problem the test would be and I'm just going to try to figure it out that something like if you have an anchor at say 120 feet so you have 120 feet you have an anchor and say it's 700 pounds um, and we're going to say salt water and um, you want to know how many PSI in an 80 cubic foot tank, 3,000 PSI tank, to lift it. And the way I kind of told them to do this, and we go over these problems, is, you know, if something's in salt water or in any, any fluid, Archimedes principle, it has a downward force and an upward force. The downward force would be 700. Um, oh, we'd say it, was, say it was 2 cubic feet. Um, so the upward force would be the weight of the water that it displaces, it displaces two cubic feet. Uh, we know salt water weighs 64 pounds per cubic foot. So two times 64, that would be an upward force of 128. So if you subtract 128 uh, from 700, you get 572. So they have a downward force of 572 pounds and they need to lift that with a lift bag. So you take the 572, they divide it by their 64, and they're going to get the number of cubic feet that they're going to need to bring it to the surface, and that comes to 8.94 okay, cubic feet. But the problem is they're at 120 feet of depth, and so again, you go to this thing, this chart, you have 120, all right, so you want to know how many atmospheres it's at. 120 plus 33 is 153, divided by 33 is... 4.64 atmospheres, so it's at 4.64 atmospheres, and again, they can check that it's between 4 and 5. They take that 8.94, multiply it by 4.64 atmospheres, and they're going to need 41.48 cubic feet at depth to bring that to the surface. So if they think they have an 80 cubic foot tank, and I know I'm going through this quick, I mean with them I kind of go through this a few times a lot slower, but they have an 80 cubic foot tank, they're gonna need a little bit more than half of that tank. They're gonna need 41 cubic feet to bring that to the surface. So they're gonna need more than half of that. So then from there, it was an 80 cubic foot, okay, so they're gonna go 41.48 divided by 80 equals point, maybe 0.5 something here. Um, oh, let's see, my calculator just died. Sorry, you can cut this out if you want when you get to it. Let's see, clear 41.48 divided by 80 equals 0.5185.51. Nine, say okay, 0.519 and we multiply that by 3,000 and, and you get 1555 PSI okay and again you know I know that's going through it kind of quickly but that was how I, I would go over but it all kind of centers on that chart because they get a lot of confidence from being able to see and check their work as they're going and doing these really quickly. And since we used to give them a couple pieces of paper to start with, I'd have them draw this out. And then the only difference is it would be, you know, in fresh water, it would be 34 feet divided by 34, okay, on your depth. And then instead of 0.445, it was 0.432. 
but everything else was the same. You know, at the, at the at, you know at 34 feet, you had 14.7. You know, at 68 feet, you had 29.4 of gauge pressure. But uh, I had them do two charts, one for fresh and one for salt. They usually, you know, after a few tries of getting the chart done, they could get it and they could kind of visualize what they had. I remembered that there were volume questions on there too. And um, again, that just so you could see, I would tell them they could use a chart for that. Um, let's say you, you get a problem like you have a, a balloon that's full at the surface and it's 10 cubic feet. So it's 10 cubic feet at the surface. Um, what would the volume be at, say, 80 feet? Okay. And so they would, you know, you'd tell them, they would know look, at the surface it was 10. Um, at 33 feet it would be 0.5 and 0.33. So they get the idea that, you know, it's related to your, to your atmospheres. And so they know that at um, 66 feet it would be a third full or 3.33. And at 99 feet, it would be a quarter full, or 2.5. And so all they needed to do is figure out at 80 feet, how many atmospheres are they under. So 80 plus 33 divided by 33 is 3.42 atmospheres. And that checks, because they put the 80 here, and 3.42 falls before, between 3 and 4. And so all they have to do is take the 10 divided by 3.42. Or two, and they get 2.92. So if you know the question was, you have a, a balloon at the surface that's 10 cubic feet. What would the volume be at 80 feet? You just figure out how many atmospheres you're at from the chart, uh, and divide that into 10, and you get 2.92 cubic feet.